Any questions from last week? No nope. comments? Everybody good? Okay. Um, two things I wanted to touch on really quickly. Uh, we had a local um, impactful person on our community pass away. Um, I know them. Um, be on the safe side. I'm not going to tell you how I know them, but I do know them and I know some, some intimate details. Uh, my wife works at a physician's office, so use your context clues there, okay? Um, and she's worked there for 20 years. And so this uh, gentleman, um, John Pasadomo, passed away. And uh, he was a familiar face. The article saying, thank you, Nancy, for bringing this. Um, he was a familiar face uh, for decades around Naples City Hall, where he was once vice mayor. Um, he will be remembered for shaping Fifth Avenue and downtown. He's one of the largest influencers on the city. Uh, and lots of good positive things. He passed away on April 3rd, two days after he fell while hiking with his wife, Kathleen. And you'll recognize that name too, Kathleen Pasadomo. She's a local uh, politician here. Yeah. yeah. And so, Senator, right, Senator. So he was, he was very fit and very active, but, but suffered a massive head trauma. I know they were very excited to go on this trip. He had planned everything out for them. Um, you know, all Kathleen had to do, she was really excited, uh, was just pack her bags and go. You know, that's what, you know, my wife was telling mm -hmm. me. They were really excited and, you know, it's a conversation they had. Um, unfortunately, this is the second story I've heard like this. Okay, now his situation was probably different. You, you can never be too safe, right? And you always, after a fall, you want to tell someone. There was another situation that I had a couple of years ago, not with someone I was working with personally, but through a client. This individual was hiking Mount Vesuvius, trip of a lifetime, right? And so she's going up and hit some gravel, slip, fell, hit her head, okay? Medical personnel there on the mountain, I guess they have them stationed out. It's what it sounded like along this trail. They get to her, check her out. She says she's fine. They get her down to the bottom of the mountain. They offer her a ride to the hospital, to the emergency room. She declined. She said, look, I feel fine. I'm just going to go to my hotel room. I want to shower. I want to eat, and I'm just going to take it easy. Well, she went back to the hotel room. She took a shower. She laid down on the bed and never got back up. Never woke up. Never woke up. So I deal with this a lot inside our independent living facilities, right? There's a quota. If you fall a certain times, they will move you to assisted living or even from assisted to long term. And so what that does is that um, really puts people in a tough situation. They don't want to tell anyone if they fall because they don't want to hit that maximum limit where they're, they're facing moving. And so what I always tell folks is that remember the HIPAA laws, right? You guys, you have to let someone know because you just don't know what's going on. And even though you may feel fine, there could be a lot of stuff going on in your head, right? And, and I have personal experience with my son. You know, he fell off a skateboard, had a <laughs> same one with the Achilles, cracked his skull. Well, he walked in the house like a space cadet. Well, I thought it was a concussion. <clears throat> Fortunately for us, my wife is trained, my daughter's trained. They, I mean, I went out and got his skateboard and I was upset. I was coming around the curve and they were leaving, right? That's about a two minute turnaround. So, and they got him to the hospital immediately. Thank goodness, because we were facing a situation where they may had to go in and drill and relieve pressure on his brain. You know, it was touch and go for about 24 hours. So if you fall, just gather yourself. Okay, gather yourself, sit up, make sure you're not hurt. If you're not hurt, then proceed and get up and make sure you tell somebody. If you've got some scratches, you don't hit your head, you're fine, right? But if you do knock your head, go ahead and make a phone call, someone you love or your doctor, okay? Do that. Um, we can talk about other technology too. If you live alone, falling, you've got Bluetooth technology and you have wireless technology. Both of these are, are uh, you see the guy, people wearing the pendants or the bracelets, all right? Bluetooth, you have to be in a certain range for it to connect to the home base. So that means if you go out to the mailbox and you fall, it may not reach and you may not have help coming because it's just disconnected for the moment. You guys know Bluetooth speakers? Yeah. 
that's how that works. So you know how you can hook your phone up to a speaker and you can play your playlist? That's Bluetooth technology. Or you see the people walking around with the earpieces, right? That's Bluetooth technology. If, if those two pieces separate far enough, they'll disconnect. Wireless technology, however, on the other hand, just like your phone, you can be anywhere, right? So like my watch, I can leave my phone at home and still get my phone calls and, and text messages. And this is relatively new, right, the last few years. So anyway, I don't want to get too all far off in the details on that. All right, any questions? All right. Can I make a comment? Absolutely. I took the class on iPhone use here, and one of the things So great point. Great point. So her point was taking, um, John does a great job with the iPhone and technology classes. And one of the things that he pressed upon was wearing your watch in the shower in case you fall. Uh, I am working with someone right now who did just that fell in the shower, broke her femur, broke her kneecap. She was there for four hours. Finally, somebody came and, and found and discovered her got her to the hospital. Long story short, she goes in, gets the rod put in, everything's fine. Four months later, the rod fails, oh. the mesh fails, falls through her kneecap and hits her tibia fibula, goes back in, has the surgery again. Now her leg is a little bit shorter than the opposite leg, uh, her left leg, all kinds of back pain, right? But had she had that watch, maybe she wouldn't have been there for so long. There was another case where a lady came in you guys know the inverters, the back inverters, you put your feet on and you flip yourself around. There was a lady that uh, came in, put her phone, was filming after work. She thought she would film it, put it on social media, send her to her family. Hey, check this out. She flipped herself upside down, couldn't get right side up. Thank goodness she had her watch. She called 911. They came in and rescued her. There was just a fella who was a hiker. He's a, he was a cave crawler cave guy huh yeah yeah sri lanka is that where it was sri lanka oh yeah oh. <laughs> i didn't know that good sri lanka good one in case you have a trivia question <laughs> so th this guy was crawling around and he went around a curve but he was going down what he didn't realize is that it was a dead end and so rescuers came, there was, it was so tight of a space, there was nothing he, they could do. He eventually passed away from all the blood coming down to his head. So yeah, yeah, so great point. Thank you for bringing that up. Good, good. All right, yes, ma'am. There's a service that Connie has called Lift Assist. Okay. I don't know that anybody, if you live alone, you can't be at that on these aisles or something. But if you have two people living in the home, it calls directly to the fire department. Oh, great. Right. People that do that. Now that requires somebody to call the number. Right. But it is a service that Collier County, County offers and a lot of people have never heard of it. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Lift assist. Yeah. Lift assist. This is a service in Collier County. If you have someone that's fallen, of course you need someone to, to make the call. Lift assist. They'll have two firemen come out, no sirens. Uh, no attention, right? Being subtle, they'll come in and they'll help get you on your feet. Thank you. Yeah, that'll be good. I'm sorry. Do they have a special number you call? Yeah, there's a number that you call. Yeah, separate. If you don't call the police department, you don't call 911. Right. You call that lift assist number. But really, Where is it listed? How do you find out about it? Well, I had found out about it when, when, when my husband needed it. Yeah, through your doctor? No, through Parkinson's Association. Oh. You know what? I'll post that. I'll, I'll clip this and post the lift assist, and then I'll put another video at the end and get the number out, and I'll put it on my social media. Lift assist. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, guys, let's rock and roll. Let's stand. Let's get behind our chairs. Good stuff this morning. Great stuff.